God wanted to get some spiritual truth through to me because he would talk to me usually in a devotional like I would oh I don't know kind of like what we're doing now I would open up a devotional book that I was reading and he would talk about one subject you know and eh, you know I'd kind of pay attention a little bit but kind of like you or anybody else you know I'd probably just shine it on a little bit so then I'd set it aside and pick up another devotion. And then I'd read it and I'd go, now wait a minute. And I'd pick up the first devotion and go, these are hundreds of years apart. Did they read each other? <laughs> then I'd pick up another devotional and I'd go, now wait a minute. These guys aren't even of the same denomination. Come on now, they didn't read each other's material. Who's trying to get through to me? Then I'd read up, I'd pick up a Bible, you know, and read something, and it fit the devotionals. I'd go, okay, God, I get the picture. You're trying to tell me something. Fine. Then I'd go somewhere, or I'd watch TV, and, you know, I'd be, maybe I'd go somewhere in the car, and sure enough, some song would come on, I'd be flipping the channels, and be something like Kenny Rogers going, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, <laughs> know when to walk away, know when to run. And I'd laugh because, you know, I'd go, you got to be kidding me. And my devotion would be talking about like, you know, when God wants you to do something, he will tell you to do it. You don't have to react every time somebody goes on the attack, because if you do, you're going to be fighting constantly windmills just like Don Quixote and you're gonna think that you're dreaming the impossible dream when in reality you got a little bit of problem upstairs you know <laughs> and you're fighting windmills and not dragons I mean come on <laughs> so I, I run into people all the time who take exception for something whatever it may be you know and sometimes the humorous part is they try to provoke me you know they want to make me answer the way they want me to answer so that they can keep the conversation going and make it into something that they could possibly be right about because usually I'm not gonna say every time because they might be right I don't know but usually most of the time when they try to do this it's like they're wrong and then they try to make it right by attacking some other thing to make fit what they think is right or maybe, you know, in some cases, it might be personal preference for them. Maybe it's right for them. I don't know. Maybe their conscience bugs them. <laughs> you know, but I kind of like the way that Chuck Smith talked about conscience. He said, you know, if your conscience is telling you that you can't go to the beach because there's half-naked women down there, don't go to the beach. But he says, you know, my conscience doesn't bother me because I'm going down there to surf. So if I'm going to the beach to surf, I'm not paying attention to half-naked women or women in bikinis. I'm going to surf. So I'm going surfing. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, if the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> if you got a problem with something, go have your problem. I don't. If it's my page, I posted it. <laughs> I just you, you blah, blah. I'm just amazed sometimes how people get carried away about what they're doing and then they want you to do what they're doing where you're at. You know what I mean? It's kinda of like someone saying, Well now I happen to like blue jeans and I want you to wear blue jeans every Monday because every Monday I see you and I want to see that you're wearing blue jeans. <laughs> be the first one to put on a pair of slacks. <laughs> I mean, no offense, if God told me on Mondays to put on blue jeans, I'd do it. <laughs> but when it comes to somebody else telling me something, you know, in one ear, out the other. You know, I'll pray about it. I'll go, okay, Lord, you know, what's their story, you know? <laughs> what's going on with that? You know, God sometimes will tell me, you know, just give me a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom and say, well, you know, this guy's really off, you know, check out his website. I'll look at it. 
Lord will say, now, why don't you go check this out? And I'll look at it, and I'll go, oh, okay, you know, maybe I need to pray for him, you know, and I'll pray for him, you know, and kind of stay away from him. <laughs> but boy, I tell you, sometimes people are the funniest things when they want to play God, you know, because everybody seems to have I like to call it a God complex. Sooner or later, everybody tries to play God with someone else. <laughs> Man, I don't care what you do. You go talk to God about it. I just pray that you get saved, and then after that, talk to God as soon as God's talking to you. Hey, you and him are on your own. <laughs> man. The ideal man. Draw nigh unto me. Shoes off thy feet in silent awe and adoration. Draw nigh as Moses drew near to the burning bush. I give you the loving intimacy of a friend, but I am God too. And the wonder of our intercourse, the miracle of your intimacy with me, will mean that much more to you if sometimes you see the majestic figure of the Son of God, the Son of Man. Draw nigh in the utter confidence that is the sublimest prayer. Draw nigh, no far off pleading, even to a God clothed with majesty of fire. Draw nigh, draw nigh, not as a supplicant, but as a listener. I am the supplicant, as I made known to you my wishes. For this majestic God is brother too, longing so intensely that you should serve your brother man, and longing even more intensely that you should be true to that vision he has for you and of you. You speak of your fellow man as disappointing you, as falling short of the ideal you had of him. But what of me? For every man there is an ideal man that I see in him. The man he could be, the man I would have him to be, the man he shall be. Judge of my heart when he fails to fulfill that promise. The disappointments of man may be great and many, but they are nothing as compared with my disappointments. Remember this and strive to be the friend I see in my vision of you. So often, you know, I mean, <laughs> I see opportunities I could annihilate somebody, you know, and praise the Lord that God has so equipped me that I do not do what my flesh is so easily capable of doing, but rather I yield myself to pull back, walk away from computer, person, whatever, and go ask God, well, Lord, what are you doing in this situation? What do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, this is obviously wrong, God, so do I have to, like, step back and let you do something, or do you want me to do something, you know? What do you want me to do? You know, and I've always found that in any relationship, that's the best way to be. Turn your focus away from the circumstance, turn it upward, Turn it outward, ask him, get alone, get right, get with him, and then you can come back to the relationship and you can deal with it. When you do that, I think you'll become more like the ideal that God wants you to be rather than the idea you have of yourself or of the circumstances. Because the ideal, with an L, is what the Lord does, and the idea, without an L, is what you do.